Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. I'm in the middle of a manual swap in my E46 BMW, and in this video, I'm gonna be switching over to the electric fan, which originally came with the manual transmissions. That means I'm gonna be getting rid of the electric pusher fan that sits in the front of the car, in the front of the radiator, and I'm gonna be getting rid of the, the uh, manual mechanical fan as well. I'm also gonna be pulling off the automatic transmission cooler and changing to a different radiator bracket. So let's get started. So we're gonna have to drain the radiator and depending on which one you actually have, you might have a little blue screw that's uh, a number three Phillips screw that you need to unscrew right here. I actually need to unscrew this whole thing, which is a 22 millimeter. I'm gonna open the radiator cap so that it actually drains out. But I'm gonna use it to control that so that it doesn't get so messy. Fortunately, some splatters are just impossible to avoid, some little splatters. One way to avoid that actually is to just hold the pan up. So we'll do it like that. You can also get this bleeder screw off. So that'll open up the floodgates a little more. Now, we're gonna take this top radiator hose off there's a little, you saw how there was a little, a little uh, metal tab you had to pull off right here. There's another one right in the back right here, which you're not going to be able to see. It should just work up in the same way. Just work these hoses back, get them off. If you've never had them off, it's gonna be really difficult to get those off, but you just have to sort of pry. One trick you can do is, is you can just try to spray some silicone spray in through the gap and hope that it makes it in to the O-ring. This is the O-ring inside here. This is what you, you actually have to get lubricated. That's what gets stuck onto the plastic parts after so long. We're just getting that out to uh, get it out of our way so we can pull the whole, uh, this whole thing up and out of here. We're gonna do all our draining on this side of the car. We're not gonna go and drain the block at all. There's no reason to. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna reach down here and pull this out. That's another little O-ring. It just happens to have a little black plastic tab so you can get at it. So next we're gonna pull the tab for this hose, which is on the back of the reservoir, or just pull it out all together, all completely. <laughs> and we're gonna try to work that one off as best we can. And it's gonna unleash another floodgate. You can sort of control it by leaving it, you know, close to where it was connected to, just kind of let it go so that it doesn't splash everywhere, you know, but just let it drain. This is basically getting out most of the coolant from the block. See, so far so good. All the coolant's in the bucket and not on the ground. So then I just take that hose and I just kind of angle it down, push it down. That way the rest of it just drains out. So the next thing you have to do is actually pull the coolant reservoir out of here. And again, if you've never had yours off, it's gonna be really, really hard and or just some cars are really, really hard. Mine for some reason is easy. But again, more coolant drains out, drains straight down into your bucket. You and get this out of here. There's a little sensor on the bottom which you just have to reach down and pinch the side of it. And that sensor will come off. It's just a sensor that plugs in down here. The, the button's on the bottom. You just reach down and press the button on the bottom and pull it off. So I had actually looked before, I'd used my, my coolant pressure tester and found out that this thing was leaking from here. And there's an O-ring in there. So that O-ring is now suspect. Really pissing me off. I'll have to dry this thing off and take a closer look at it. There's another hose down low that I need to pull off. It's that one right there. It's the same kind of deal. You just gotta flip the little clip up 
or out completely and then pry it out. Um, I'm not going to be able to hold the camera and do that at the same time. Uh, also, to get the automatic cooler out of here, which we should do, just, you know, they'll probably drain out anything that's in here, I think. Actually, the thermostat might keep it blocked up. But let's get this out of here just to drain out anything. And we'll do it controlled. Don't let the floodgates open uncontrolled. Just do that. Always do something like that. I'm going to try to reach down in here and unhook this. I find that a twisting motion hole helps sometimes. This one's being difficult on me. So what I might do is get a long pry bar, maybe a really long one. It might be too long, but it's long enough to pop it off. I had to counter hold it because it's not really attached. A little more coolant there. And that is it. That is every hose attached to this radiator, except for the lower one on the other side. But I don't think we're going to need to actually take that one off or drain it. There's, there should be nothing in it anyway. Uh, I don't think we need to take the radiator out because we should, if we're clever, be able to get to the screws for this bracket from the side. So there is a T25 right in here holding the radiator in. We're going to get that out. And that'll let the whole radiator sort of pull out a little bit. And then we'll be able to access this screw right here, which is also a T25. Let's not drop it. Okay. Let's put that radiator back into place just to kind of hold it. There's another T25 way on the bottom. You just kind of have to feel for it. I'll show you where it is once I, uh, once I get it out. But I'm just going to feel for it. You can see it from the bottom, actually. Just another one of those T25 plastic screws. So now, if I remember, it comes out from the bottom. A little more coolant and then just slides up and off. So that screw was right here. So that's what you got to reach for. You can just find this thing, reach right underneath it, basically directly underneath this hose. So you see the two parts here and you see how they're different. This is a thermostat for the automatic, uh, for the ATF cooler. You can see how it controls coolant passing through this passage right here. This is one of the ATF passages. So it just doesn't have that. But it's got the two screw holes in the same location. It also has a drain on another drain on the bottom of it, interestingly. But yeah, we're going to basically hook it on on the top first, and then you just push it on on the bottom. And there should be an O-ring on this. At least there was an O-ring, or there is an O-ring on this one. I don't know, maybe this isn't, maybe this isn't an O-ring thing. We're gonna have to see how that works because usually there's a little groove for an O-ring right there. Maybe that's sort of a friction fit or something. No, I guess that, that can't be because it's actually open right here. It's just open, completely see-through, which is, um, which is strange to me because why would this have a, an O-ring on it? It looks actually like it's wet. So I'm wondering, I mean, I don't think the radiators are different, but the thing is if I plug this thing in and fluid drains out of there, I'm screwed. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta see about this. Okay guys, so here's the story with the two different basically radiator brackets. This one has a hole in it and 
what you're supposed to do if you have the OEM radiator is you're supposed to actually change the little plug that goes in the bottom of the radiator. See, there's supposed to be a blue plug in the bottom of this, and that's supposed to be the drain. This piece right here, actually, it does have the O-ring, but on the OEM radiator, there's a little, there's sort of a little extension, and then the O-ring is right there. And the automatic one is either longer or shorter than the manual one. Um, and so that O-ring is supposed to plug up the, the inside and then it's supposed to, it's supposed to drain down the little center of that extension. And then when you take the drain plug out, that's when it drains. So by getting a longer one, you actually move the O-ring up and it's sealing further up past this little hole. But the problem is I don't have the OEM radiator. I have the bare aftermarket radiator and they designed this piece and if I go and I get that that other piece, that manual piece, I, I, I it doesn't look like it has these threads on it where it can thread in. It's got some strange wings on it. Um, so I'm just, I'm not gonna go with this one. That's, that's the story at the end of the day. I'm just gonna put this back on. I'm gonna put the ATF cooler back on so that the coolant doesn't leak out from there. And I'm just gonna leave it because I really have no other choice. Oh well. Okay, so I've got the radiator buttoned back up and installed back the way it was. Um, yeah, I had to replace the O-ring on the bottom of that piece that went into the radiator. And I hope I have the right O-ring and I hope it doesn't leak. I'm kind of nervous about it. I don't know what happened to the, one, the other one when I pulled it out of there, but it's just nowhere to be found. So, yeah, all of that stuff has me nervous. I just, I don't know, this thing might leak when I get it back together, but... Anyway, that's where we are. I'm going to, uh, I have this other radiator expansion tank that I got from a viewer. It's not supposed to be for my car. It's supposed to be for P Project Black Savage. Um, so thank you again, Neve. I'm gonna use this one on my car because I have to right now. I'll just replace this. You just contact me, tell me, you know, was this a dealer part? Was, which particular brand was this? Because there's no name on it. Um, but whatever it was, I'm just, you know, I'll, I'll get another one for Project Black Savage. But I'm going to use this one on mine right now. By the way, Project Black Savage is almost here, guys. I just, we've had some problems doing the, um, doing the, the lean sale, but I think that it's going to, you know, we've done two failed ones. They keep denying it for various reasons, but I think this one's going to take. So it's almost here. I think we got about two more weeks on it. Um, but before I put this in, I'm going to put some silicone paste around the O-rings so that they're lubricated and they slip down in easier. Silicone paste, dielectric grease, same stuff, great stuff. Basically a rubber safe lubricant. And this is what makes the difference between struggling to get this thing on and uh, getting it popped right on. Okay. Let's, uh, let's connect the electrical connector first makes it a little easier and actually before actually before we get this on i'm remembering now there's that one lower radiator hose i couldn't see it because i moved it all the way down but there's that lowermost hose that we want to get connected right now you want to push push the clip in first and then push it on and when it snaps you know it's on I think I, I wasn't doing that in my first, in my other radiator videos because I just didn't even realize that. But yeah, they're, they're, these things are made for quick assembly on the factory floor and they're just a pain in the ass for us in use. Okay, so connect the electrical connector and now that thing slips right on. Oh, and I don't think that this one had the little, the little, I think we have to transfer over that little lock. Yeah, we do. We got to transfer over the little lock. This guy, I'm gonna transfer it over and she slips right on. And that's the power of the silicone grease. So make sure all of our snaps are in place. Let's do this bottom one here. That snap is in place. Pops right on. And, and if yours are really old and you're reusing them for some reason, which you really shouldn't be, you should, you know, get new hoses if you don't have them. Um, put silicone paste around them as well. That'll help, that'll help lubricate those old ones. So that one's on. Push that one on and then remember to push the reservoir forward 
so that it locks into the hose. So, okay, reassembly is really nice and easy, but now we gotta put some new coolant in here and hope, we'll do a pressure test, we'll hope that that coolant doesn't leak out of the bottom there. So I'm gonna leave my pan down there. I've got a little bit of coolant. Let's just add it, see what happens. Really pretty nervous about it. Just got my spill-free funnel here. I really need to write down, put a BMW on the one that's for the BMW. I think this is the one, this little inner part, even though it, even though it moves up and down. I am using the green just because you seem to have so many problems with leaks on these cars. And honestly, it, the green doesn't really matter. I don't know how much goes in until it spills over there. I suppose we have to put it all in. Anyway, yeah, there's just, you have so many leaks with this thing. It's just, you, you go through a fortune with the blue coolant. I'm not putting blue coolant in this thing until I know it hasn't leaked, until it hasn't leaked for a year. I'm not gonna change the coolant. I just don't care. Okay. Question is, is there coolant in the radiator at this point? I would think there would have to be. I don't know, that was a gallon. It basically takes two gallons. I don't know if I have another gallon already. I think I do somewhere. If not, I gotta go get some other coolant or reuse this stuff, which is, I don't know, only a couple months old. We'll see. I'm kind of half suspecting that it's gonna leak anyway. All right, I'm gonna reuse the old stuff. I just, again, don't care. Let's put a little filter in it. Filter out all the crusties. You can give me crap for it if you want, that's okay. Like I said, it's only, it's only a few months old. You know, the problem with this is that it's gonna come leaking out of the top there. And there it goes. <laughs> I didn't know it would happen that fast. Okay. Well, I think we have enough in there to pressurize the system. So much for my uh, lack of mess. Anyway, we haven't basically done anything as far as uh, what you need to do to switch to the, to the new fans. I mean, you can just put your new fan in, but you wanna get the old fan out from in front of the, uh, the radiator there. So the way we do that is we gotta take off the front bumper. So we'll have to do that. Let me take this off. I'm gonna do a radiator pressure test, make sure that lower O-ring is not leaking and Make sure that's all good. We'll install the new fan. We'll get the old fan out of there. Let's get the radiator pressure tester hooked up. Get it pumped up. About 15. Let's just go 15 exactly. So let's let that sit and we'll go underneath. We'll check that O-ring, see if it's good. Well. If that O-ring was gonna leak, it would be leaking right now. We would be seeing dripping. I think it's good. Looks like we're still holding at 15 PSI. So we're good. Well, that takes care of the cooling system. Unfortunately, we didn't get anywhere with that. Basically, same place as when we started, but you guys get the idea. That is what you would do. That's how you would do it. So now let's proceed with the rest of this. So to get the bumper off, um, normally you have this like splash panel that's underneath here and it should be fastened to the front bumper with some push clips here. I don't keep mine on because frankly, I wanna know when you know leaks happen on my car. So I think that's just a bad thing to actually have on the car. But uh, if after you take that off, all we have to do is basically detach these fasteners here. I'm missing one right here. It's supposed to be eight millimeters. So I'm just missing that one up there. I think I'm missing it on the other side as well. But I have, I have these two front ones. So that's, that's all for the bottom of the bumper. We don't need to take the splash panels out because those are, you know, all we have to do is just unfasten them to the front bumper. So now you've just got two T50 bolts underneath the bumper right here. 
just feel along for the holes. They're right here. And that's what they look like. Now you can just pull the bumper off, pull the bumper forward. We're gonna need to disconnect some electrical connectors, but they just sort of push on here. I'll do these sides first. You just push the little clips on the side and they come off. You may or may not have fog lights on yours. So we'll have to get this plastic air duct off. There are these little plastic push fasteners on the side here. You can unscrew the centers. They will only unscrew so far. These honestly are, are difficult to get off. It was really a struggle getting them off last time. <clears throat> I think it's gonna be just as much of a struggle this time. And right, I'm just gonna pull that center out and then pull that thing out. And that's basically what you gotta do, but I don't know, it, it was, <laughs> I've had these out before, so they're coming out really easy this time. But if you've never had them out, you just gotta pull on them like real hard. <laughs> yeah, piece of cake now that I'm showing you. Of course. So that just pulls right out. So now we can take out this fan. They're going to be four 13s. You want to reach behind and unplug the electrical connector because you're going to need to get this out. So it just pulls off and that electrical connector should come through. Right there. So now we don't need this thing anymore. I'll put these back on. Slip these plastic fasteners back in. Oh, I found the O-ring. <laughs> well, we have it just in case. On a sedan, you have these little white bumper guides. The coupe's different. Just, you know, look and see and see how your bumper works and Basically it just slips into guides on either end and slips in and that's it. This thing is dead. Ha. I can feel it dying. I don't know if these are supposed to be screws or maybe push fasteners originally came with these. I don't know. I, I didn't have these splash panels, so I got them from a junkyard and I don't remember. Maybe I put the little retainer clips on, on the bottom of them and put the screws on myself. I really don't know. And now the easiest part, we just lay our fan right in there where the old fan went. And then you just use the same connector Connect that up, the little uh, air sensor for the cooling system. And we just gotta replace this bolt right here. It just kind of holds the fan in place. So this is of course the easiest part. And I suppose you could have just done this. You could have just removed the old manual fan and put this new electric fan in its place and just leave your your other fan there. Um, but that just, you know, you've got that, that fan in front that's not moving, that's sort of blocking the airflow when it's not moving. So you might as well remove it. Might as well do as good a job as you can, you know? Cool. That's it. So the most important thing is to test this fan right now, make sure it works. 
I don't want to get that get out there on the road and find out I've got a dead fan in an overheating car. That would be really bad. So the way we test that is we turn it on and we turn on the air conditioning. The fan is always on when the air conditioning's on. Yeah, it's on. Fan's on, it's working. Well, today was one of those days when things did not exactly go according to plan, but such is life, you kinda gotta roll with these punches. Um, if you enjoyed the video anyway, give me a thumbs up. It's time for me to drive this thing. Uh, subscribe if you want more. I got one more video coming in this series about coating the car so we can get rid of that little uh, that little gear icon because there's no manual transmission or there's no automatic transmission found. So stay tuned. I'll do a coating video soon. For now, I'm going to take this thing off the jacks. Well, put the wheels back on first, take it off the jack stands, go test drive it finally. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.